All right, guys, good old boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting here at the home away from home in our review table, and I'm getting ready to do something really cool, and I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be a lengthy video, but we're going to make it move as fast as we possibly can. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this guy right here. This is the Cryptic Coatings Bolt Carrier Group, and I will tell you this right now. This is one of the finest mil-spec style bolt carrier groups that I've ever experienced. Look at it. It's shiny. It's loving. It's beautiful. Well, anyway, what are we going to do? We're going to take it and we are going to basically do the pin thing, the gauge thing. I'm not doing what uh, Instructor Chad does. We're going to move a little faster. I'm actually going to show you on the drawings where in the world we get all these little dimensions from. So anyway, just a real quick introduction. Uh, my good friend JB Razor told me I needed to go check these guys out. When we started doing the Carrier Bowl, or the BCG Bowl, uh, a lot of people said you need to try Cryptic Coatings. I sent him an email. He said, man, I would love to uh, meet you. So we sat down. He showed me all the ins and outs of bolt carrier groups. I learned a lot that day about the industry. And I tell you what, he made me put this guy right to here together all the way from putting the uh, ejector pin and the spring in, the uh, bolt, uh, installing the springs, properly staking and torquing down the, uh, the uh, what do you call these things, the gas key uh, screws. But other than that, it was just really neat. I actually sat there, he put this thing into the laser machine and encrypted the uh, pterodactyl character on there, I guess is what you want to call it. All right, what are we doing here today? I'm going to basically... Uh, when I started doing this thing, everybody was like, you gotta, you, when are you going to start measuring and pinning and doing all the cool things stuff? And I'll tell you what, man, a lot of respect for the guys who actually do this stuff for a living. I don't. But I, I, I'm always trying to learn, which is what we are doing here today. So let's take this bolt, took it, already, took it apart, took the uh, extractor spring out, the donut... The, uh, the, the, the infill, the rubber infill, here's a uh, firing pin, retaining pin, and the firing pin. In comparison, I've got an old boy right here, and this guy's been around forever. So when we have something we may want to compare, we're going to take an old guy versus the new guy. So here's what we're going to do. I want to start off by showing you the drawings for the bolt carriers. And when I asked Mr. Huffman, uh, do you have a set of specs and a drawings? Guess what he did? He brought out the exact same thing I'm going to show you right now. So for a bolt carrier group, there's uh, three or four main parts. you got the bolt, the extractor, you've got the cam pin, you've got the gas key, firing pin, and the carrier itself. So first thing we're going to start off, and we already did a video on this guy right here. This is the firing pin. As you can see right here, here's all of your dimensions, all the way up and to the point, what the radiuses are, the diameters, really, really cool stuff. We did a video on that. It got my hand... <laughs> A lot of people gave me grief about it. Uh, here is the gas key. These are the drawings. These are the specs on the gas keys. We're going to talk about the diameter for the screw holes. We're going to talk about the diameter for each individual hole. You can see right over here on the right-hand side where my cursor is, you've got a 0.25, a 0.116, a 0.117. There's the actual depth that each hole is to be drilled. We've also got down here a 0.125 on this area right here on the vertical hole. This is going to be a cool thing, and if you stick around, you're going to learn all about this cool stuff, all right? One of my experiences is I like to learn, and I want to bring you along for the journey. This is the cool part. Then we've got the carrier right here. You can, the, not a carrier, what does he call this thing? This is the bolt. <laughs> and you can see how the extractor fits in there, the extractor pin, what your bolt lugs look like. It's interesting, all these lugs are the same with exception of one. And I'm not talking about the lug on the extractor pin. I'm talking about right here. All right, let's keep moving along. As you can see, I've highlighted a lot of these areas, but what we've done is I've itemized each one into an individual picture that we're going to show you a little bit more about how these belt carriers have designed. Have they changed over the years? Just a little bit, not too much, just a tad. All right, so moving up here, let's see, we've got some dimensions, some length of dimensions. We're not going to check lengths. We're not going to check diameter of the exterior. Maybe we'll do that down the road, uh, and we'll see how that works out. But Anyway, you've got the firing pin, you've got the firing pin hole right here, as well as, let's keep moving along, you've got some gas rings right here. This is what the gas ring set up. This is an uncompressed, is a 0.512 diameter, the interior dimensions. This is an elliptical, see right there, as well as we have some really cool stuff 
about the opening between those that allow, allows this thing to compress as it goes into the carrier. And we'll talk about that in a minute. We're also going to talk about the extractor. A lot of really cool stuff with this extractor. It's not just a piece of steel. This thing is probably one of your biggest uh, areas where you can see some malfunctions. And there's some reasons why, and we're going to talk about that. And it's not all about uh, depths. It's a lot about angles. All right, moving forward, we'll go ahead and talk about, well, that's the extractor pin. It's a pin. 0.1 thousandths of an inch, or a 0 0.1000 diameter of an inch. Pretty cool stuff. All right, next thing you know, you've got your uh, ejector pin. We're not going to talk about that too much. We'll touch on it a little bit. Uh, one of the things I am going to do in the near future is we are going to get a load compression testing machine so we can test the load on springs. You have a compressed length and an uncompressed length. Look at that. That's cool. All right. Pretty neat stuff. But all the way down to the extractor uh, spring, the end fill, you got the rubber fluorosilicon fluor fluor type 2. That's the end fill. We're not going to talk too much about that. The uh, crane donut was long after this thing. These guys were developed, guys, in April two, uh, 1970. Really neat. All right, here's some unmarked up drawings. These are really nice because you can tell the difference. Here's all the dimensions right here. Okay, uh, there's a screw, there's the carrier. And you know, over the, over the time, the original carrier was only like 5.922 inches in length. Now it's over six inches in length. But here are all the dimensions. There's, at the end of the day, I think there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight areas of measurement just with the gauge pins on the carrier itself. All right, moving forward, there you go. See how short that puppy is right there? And that little nipple on there? All right, so let's go ahead and kill this right here. And let's pull up all these images right here. And we're gonna talk about each individual one. I'm gonna make this as fast as I can. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the gas kit. All right, so one of the things I am going to share with you are all the dimensions for these guys, okay? Wait for this bad boy to pull up. There we go. All right, so the gas key. The gas key has actually one, two, three different dimensions just on the front side. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy right here and I'm gonna tell you the inner dimensions or the inner portion of this guy all the way inside is measured out at a 0.116 plus or minus a Five thousands. Now, on this guy right here, I've actually taken the liberty of going ahead and measuring all these things out. Now, I can tell you that this is a 0.118. And one of the things I'll show you is what you can do is you can stick it all the way in there and it will stand right dead center. So you can see right there. Look at that. You guys see that? All right. Now, that's pretty cool stuff right there. As you can see, it's moving right there. Now, that is the end inner section. I'll show you real quickly. You can pull this thing out and that's how far it goes in. I'm not going to worry about showing you the depth or miking the depth of this because that's very difficult to do when you're doing it via the fingernail. <laughs> All right, so the second point of measurement that we're going to have on the drawing, it says 0 0.172. 0 0.172. And I can tell you the actual on this thing is actually a little bit bigger. It's a 0.174. I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now. So take a 0.174 pin. We're going to drop it in there and it will actually fit all the way in the hole. Now it's not on the outside of the inner of the, the there's four sections, three sections, one, two, three. So we've done this one. Now we're on the center section, but that guy right there is well within spec. Now I'm going to show you something. We do have a sample right here, which is kind of cool. I'm looking forward to showing you some things on that. So the third portion of this thing is the outer part of the tube, and it is supposed to measure 0 0.1805 plus or minus 8 thousandths. Now on this guy right here, it measures out at 1 or 0 0.180. And I'm going to show you how perfect that is. Look at that. There is no wiggle space. It's in there tight, and that's cool. So let's do this real quickly. I'm going to show you something. Because the next hole that we're going to be talking about is the bottom hole. Because you know how much we like bottom holes. <laughs> All right, so we put that in there. I want you to listen to this. This is how... I don't know if you can hear that or not. That is how airtight that thing is. Can you imagine you've got a gas tube 
right here. And this guy is going back and forth onto that gas tube. What the perfection of timing it has. There's 25, 20,000 PSI that runs through this gas tube. This thing is absolutely sick. But that has to funnel in there every, every time. Isn't that awesome? And these are the things that I'm talking about. These are learning experiences. And if, you, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, uh, I, I know that there's guys out there that teach this in a class. Uh, and, but what I wanted to do, I actually invested in the pins. I invested in the measurement tools. Uh, I did the research and found, you know, through these drawings, uh, the found the exact holes. Let's see, right here, the bottom hole is specified. Hold on, let's say. You've got it right here. It's shown at 0.125, plus or minus five, five thousandths. So what happens is, is I'm going to get a 125 here, right here, and it's got a little bit of a tight fit right there. But it'll, it'll start into the hole, but you know what we'll have to do is we're going to have to bring in a 124 right there. Now watch what happens when I bring that pin out. Here we go. I'm going to hold it like that. Look how slowly it sinks down in there. That's how well these things are machined. Mr. Huffman told me that the hardest part of a bolt carrier group to make is the gas key. Now, the one cool thing about this gas key is that it is made for a left-handed or a right-handed operational uh, bolt. You can tell by these little beveled areas right here. But watch that. That's the airtight. Now, I'll take that pin out and we'll drop it down. There you go. That's how cool. I hope you. <laughs> I hope if you come away with something that's really neat, this is one of them. So another thing I want to talk about are the gas key screw holes. There's two depths. You got one here, one here, the top up here because they're supposed to be recessed, and then the screw is going to catch here. Now, uh, over the years, these screw holes have increased in size. However, these have not. These screw holes are 0.73 per the spec or on the drawing. And they're somewhere here. But what, what's interesting is that mine measure out at 0.276. So let's go over here. I've got the 276 somewhere around here. Do -do 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 -do, right here. And this is pretty neat. This is how exact these things are cut. I can take this and put pressure on it and it will not move. It fits perfectly in the hole. That's what she said. I know somebody was thinking it. I just said it. I just said it. I knew somebody was thinking it. You nasty individuals. Yes, you are. All right. So moving forward, that is the gas key. Pretty interesting stuff. And I'm not talking about the staking or anything else like that, or YFS or uh, grade 8 staked or grade 8 bolts, 41,000 shear point. But uh, I think it's just interesting to learn about some of these other cool aspects. Let's talk about the bolt real quickly. All right, so on the bolt, as far as I know, there are four different measurements that we can go by. The cam hole, the firing pin rear hole, the firing pin bolt face, and then the bolt face. Now, I can measure the distance between here and the bolt face. I'm not really interested in that today, but I will show you something that's really cool. But before we do that, on the drawing, let's go to the the uh, bolt. On the drawing you'll see here you've got 0 0.32, 0 0.31275 with an incredible variance all the way down. That's what, 750 thousandths? So anyway, you got 32175. This thing, well, the only th I only have stuff that goes down to a 3.12. So as you can see right there, that thing will fit perfectly in there. Now, it's interesting is that I have this guy, and it doesn't protrude as far through the bolt as this one does. And then we'll go ahead and take this one here. I can never remember what side those go in. There. And this one kind of is the same way. It's a little tight. But this one right here, she's a little big, but not too big. Pretty neat. Um, a gorgeous bolt. Man. So anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting. That is one of the tightest tolerances is that screw because it, that hole is tapered so that this guy right here can only go in one side. And it prevents you from, well, putting your damn bolt in wrong. Okay, so the next one we have is the rear firing pin hole. Now, let's go ahead and go to the next diagram. 
This one's gotten a little old, but you can see over here on the edge, it says 0.157 diameter. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a 157 right here. This, my particular one, actually can take up to a 0.158, but it is supposed to pass all the way through in the clear, just like that. So let's take a 0.158, and it's interesting, if you look on the specifications, it says for the, the top, for the space between here and to this area right here, the brooch, you're supposed to pass a plug of 0.154 freely. Now right there, that thing kind of starts getting stuck, but that is a nice tight bore. A, a lot of in, innuendos in this video, guys, and I'm sorry. All right, so the firing pin bolt face uh, right here, uh, that's pretty typical. We're going to go with a 0 .063, and I'm going to show you something interesting. So this guy's pretty tight through here. Not a lot of movement from side to side in that hole, but if you take this older bolt and we put it in there, there is just all kinds of movement. And it's so much so that I can pretty much take that up to maybe a zero six six. Eh, she's a little tight on that, but it's 0 .065, and that is on the verge of being a no-go, okay? So I will tell you that. Uh, will it keep it from firing or performing? No, you're probably going to get more stuff go wrong because of the gas rings or this carbon. Look at this, carbon buildup. Look at that. Good grief. Come on, Johnny. got to clean your shit. All right, so anyway, this is why I brought this old bolt out. Um, ugh, get that out of here. Another thing I want to talk about is the bolt face. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. So your bolt face, if you look at the drawing over here, we're looking at a 0 .380 plus or minus five thousandths. Uh, let's take that 0 .380. My actualness is a 0 .382, but I want to show you how tight the tolerances are on here. We'll take that out. I'm going to go ahead and compress in the ejection spring, and I want to show you something. I can hardly wiggle this thing around, but that's what it looks like right there. And you can tell this guy is tight, and that's just fitting in there. But when it's in there, you cannot move it from side to side, or barely. Next thing we're going to do is I'm also actually going to get a, uh, the uh, ejection uh, pen removing tool. Uh, from Brown Nails, the boys over there at Brown Nails. All right, so that's pretty much it on the bolt itself. The next thing we're going to talk about is the extractor. All right, uh, actually, I did forgot to take about the cam pin. I'm not worried about that guy. The extractor, believe it or not, there's a lot of cool things about this guy that uh, you normally wouldn't think about. But in any case, what we want to do is we want to talk about the holes. <laughs> The holes in the grooves. All right, so the extractor pin hole. The extractor pin, where are you at? This guy right here is supposed to be 0 0.10. That's in millimeters. We don't like you. So 0 0.10. And this guy, I think pretty much everybody is, is measuring out at a 0 0.0995. I could take that out if I can find my extractor pin. Oh, jeez, Louise. Here's another one over here. It's got a little bit more wear on it. 0 0.990, as you can tell. Uh, I'm just losing stuff left and right. Okay, so 0 0.9950. But what we want to look at, first thing we want to look is the extractor pin hole. This guy right here. The spec calls out, and let's do this. We're going to rotate over and talk. Look, here we go. The spec calls for that hole opening to be a 0.1015 in diameter. So let's go ahead and we'll pull out a 0.101 and we'll see if we can put a 102 in it. And I think on this particular guy, I am actually getting it up to a 1.03. Let's go ahead and pull that out right there. Very neat. And you can this thing is really in there. Uh, there's not a lot of side to side movement still spins freely. I try to get a 104. She may go through there, but I don't want to damage the finish. Again, a lot of guys were asking about uh, if, how the finish might be affected or the dimensions might be affected by the finish. Uh, I think 
I can answer that question by saying they do take into account the thickness of the finish uh, when they mill the surfaces. And I'll, we'll be able to get a little further into that when we uh, talk about it. As a matter of fact, uh, right here, thickness of the finish on the, uh, the, the gold, the blue mystic, black mystic, is two to three microns, which is 0.00. 007 <laughs> to uh, 0 0.000, which is ten thousandths, I think. Okay, uh, so that's it. The exterior, you've got the extractor spring bottom hole. Okay, uh, that's this right here. This is pretty neat stuff right here, also. Um, that dimension on the bottom, per the detail, hold on one second, is supposed to be 0.156. Now, the interesting thing about these holes is that they are drilled in at an angle, okay, three degrees to be exact. Uh, this particular one uh, measures out to be a 0.159. Now, I want to show you something really cool. This is, this is some of the neat stuff right here. So, I got a 0.159, and I can fit that thing in there to where it is perfect. Look at that. Now, the cool part about it is I can sit there and I can press on this and it won't move. That's how tight the tolerances are. Now that hole is flared at the top. So the flare is actually at the opening of the flare is a, uh, I think it's a 0.189 on this specific one. But look at that. So I can sit there, I can move this thing around. But if you look at it, I wish I had it on a straight edge where you can show, but there is an angle. It's a three degree. It actually pitches back three degrees. Uh, which way does it pitch back? Oh, it pitches back this way. <laughs> and then what happens is also the, there's an angle to the claw right here. So when you've got this thing sitting here at three degrees that way, the claw right here is actually a 0 0.065. So let's take it that, and here's a 0 .065 pin, and you can see that these are almost perpendicular, not quite, because the claw is set at 2 degrees, where the spring is set at 3 degrees. But in any case, uh, there are gauges that you can buy that will test the, that were set up, or you can custom make them to set, to test the, uh, the depth of that uh, claw groove. In any case, let's see, there we go. You can see these things are so tight they'll actually hold in place on their own. I was really intrigued by that whole thing and that's something that I was, I'm really happy to share with you guys. Okay, so that's basically it on the extractor. Not too concerned about the cam pin. I didn't even look at that. Uh, but here's the cool thing. Let's talk about the carrier. Now the carrier has, like I said, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points of measurement on these things. And we're going to talk about those right now. As a matter of fact, let's go to the drawings. And there's the club, there's the claw. And here is the first set of drawings for the uh, carrier. Now the carrier, like I said, it has changed over time. But a couple of things that haven't changed, you, you may have the enhanced carriers and you're gonna see some changes, gas ports, things like that. So we've got a single hole that is right here. This thing measures out at, uh, per spec, is a .125. They don't give you a plus or minus on this thing. I don't think they really care about this, but a .125, and my particular one measures out at a one or .126. And it's supposed to be just from one side. And you can see from there, that's how tight it is. Pretty cool. Now, let's talk about a couple other things. All right, so here we go. We're talking about the other holes right here. Uh, by looking at the drawing that we're looking at, we're going to be looking at these two holes right here. These are 0 .109. They're through one side, only two locations. Now, mine don't exactly measure out at 0.109 to measure it out at 0.107. So I'm going to take a 0.107 pin and I'm going to show you something cool. So the angles, there's the angle on that guy right there, the angle of the dangle. And then 
here's the other angle right here. This is the one that gets you in the eye all the time. It comes in at an angle like that. Pretty neat, I thought. So anyway, that's what that thing's all about. You don't want to scratch it. I don't want to get too much going on there. I don't want to disturb that finish, but I'm going to tell you something. This is one of the neatest things that I've ever done. And I honestly, had somebody not told me to go over to uh, Instructor Chad's videos and check his out, I would never know anything about this. So I, I give him credit for what I'm doing right now. If you're not subscribed to him, go over there, man. The guy's a wealth of knowledge. He is a professional, by the way. All right, guys. So let's take a look at the carrier itself on the front and the rear sides. Now, what I'm looking at is we have a front gas ring hole. We've got the front hole, interior core section, middle core section, rear core section. And then we're talking about the firing pin retaining hole, which is over there. <laughs> okay, so one of the things we want to do is take a look at the drawing here. We've got two separate sections. If you look at my cursor, we have a section right here. We have a section right here. Now, a couple of people, again, they were asking me about the finish and how it may... Uh, impede in getting a proper measurement. Well, I'll tell you what they do is they go ahead and they heat treat it and then they go ahead and grind and after that finish this area right here on the internal portion is supposed to be measured out at a 4984. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, I'm gonna probably use this 499 and let's see how that fits in there. Fits perfect. Look at that. And in that core section right there. Now I've got a 499 plus right here, which is a what a 50 thousandths bigger, and you can barely tell the difference. Okay, now that was the interior core section right here. Now what we want to do is we want to check the circumference of this guy right here. Now what is that? That is where this brooch section right there makes contact. And wow, it gets a really good seal. This guy. That's, that's good stuff right there. <laughs> okay. That finish is supposed to be a 5315. And after the finish, you're supposed to have a 5299. As you can see right here, I've circled it. All right, so let's take a 5299 right here. And that's a 529 plus, which means a 5295. And enter that. Beautiful. How pretty that is. It goes in and out. I love that. It's just so smooth. It's just off. Okay, never mind. I want you guys to look at the inside of that thing. That is absolutely beautiful. I will tell you that right now. Okay, so what we've got now is we've got to check. There are three different size openings in this thing from the rear. You've got this section right here. There's one. This is two. And this is three. Now, if you notice, we've got up here, we have uh, a grind after heat treat, uh, a two, five, two, three, and then after the finish, you're gonna have a point two, five, one, four. So let's see, I'm gonna drag out the two, five, one, four. There's a two, five, one. And we're gonna head and drop it in there. And this should get us pretty close. Now on the actual here, mine is a two, five, one. And you can see, wait a minute, there we go. I want, to, I want to show you guys how that drops in there. And then we'll look at it from the other direction. But that gives you a clear, clean finish. There we go. You can see the gauge up in there. There you go. Now, will it fit a 252? Uh, you know what? It may, but I'm not going to try to push it. You can see it just fits barely in there. All right, I always want to make sure I put these things back. The writing on these guys was so small. <laughs> All right, so now what we want to do is we want to check that center section right here, the center core, or middle core is what I like to call it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be measured out of the 281. A 281. Uh, mine, I've already measured it out. It's a 279 to be exact. So let's go ahead. I want to show you what that looks like. 279. And here we go. Put that in there. It should drop right in and it's seated and it will not move. 
So that means that's a pretty good one right there. So 279 plus or minus a uh, 13 thousandths. Uh, 0 0.013, that one might be a little tight. All right, so the rear section right here, you're going to see this core section is measured out at a 437, 0.437. So let's go ahead and try that and see if it'll fit in there. It's a little on the tight side. It doesn't want to go all the way in, so let's try a 436 right here. And that's perfect. It does fit in there. There you go. So those are the the holes in there. So you've got one, two, three, four, five different measurements just in this little area right here of the beast or the carrier. All right, the firing pin retention hole. Let's talk about that real quickly. Uh, it took me a while to find that, but here's the detail on this guy right here. The cross section is a point zero nine three plus or minus through, and then you've got some other measurements here but let's go ahead and get the 0.093 out all right so we got a 0 0.093 right here and this should pass all the way through there you go and that's how big your uh what do you call that firing pin retaining pin it looks like uh, a foosball table wouldn't it be cool if you made a foosball table out of bolt carriers boom it'd be pretty heavy could you imagine spinning 10 of these things Guys, this was a lot of fun for me. I was trying to figure out a good way of doing this video, uh, and it just really is one of those things you got to sit down and do. I want to show you something else. This uh, cryptic coatings, watch this. That is the cam pin. It just falls right out of here. That's how slick that stuff is. We're going to try to devise a method in which we can gauge the slickness of a bolt carrier. It's one of those things. Uh, you get out here, you want to see all the nickel boron finishes, all the cool parts. And again, here is the uh, firing pin retaining pin. And a good firing pin retaining pin has rounded edges. So when you insert it in, it just pops right in. There's those ones that you have to work in, there you check it out. They're pretty much squared off and it looks like they've been cut. All right, guys, first of all, I just want to thank the guys over there at Cryptic Coatings. Thanks, Gary, for uh, allowing me the opportunity to look at this thing. This is absolutely breathtaking. Again, guys, uh, discount code CODABOY32. Get 10% off of these things right now. Uh, they're pretty busy. Uh, they make them one at a time per the order. They're absolutely breathtaking. So anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you're here towards the end, I really appreciate it. Uh, again, I want to thank... Uh, some people out there like instructor Chad who give us the inspiration to get out there and learn a little bit more about the business, a little bit more about the industry. And that's it. Um, always end like this. God bless America. God bless us men, women in uniform, 24 seven for our freedom. Freedom is not free. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and have already done so. And I wish I had time to do a blooper reel because there's a lot of them. Let's go to boy 32. I'm out. Hold on. Look how beautiful that is. Isn't that pretty? I can make it sit upright. <laughs> I'm out of here. Y'all be good.